Hello, and welcome to The Ripple Effect. I am Selena. So today's topic is about being in the will of God. Um, once upon a time, I used to work in medical records, and we used to get calls from people who um, were related to people who passed away. And so we would get great nieces, cousins, uncles calling because they wanted to claim the beneficiary uh, so they can collect the insurance money. And there was some disgruntled people who would call because they wanted to make sure their name was listed as a beneficiary. Now, I had no control over who would be listed as a beneficiary. That's some documentation they would have to take to the courthouse. Nonetheless, they were adamant about what person and who should be in this person's will. And I pose the question, are we that adamant about being in the will of God? I had a discussion with my son probably a few weeks ago, and I was talking about God's will versus my will. And I'm going to be very honest with you. Sometimes in life, we don't always want to submit to the will of God because that's what it is. It's submission. God does not force anything. He asks us if we want to be in partnership with him, if we want to do this thing together and live our life built on purpose. So single mother, this is for you. Are you living in God's will? And the next question is, it's probably going to hurt your feelings, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you're living in um, willful and knowing sin, then you are outside of the will of God. Just in case some of you had a question about where is the will of God, outright sin, willingness. Now, we all going to sin, okay? Romans tells us that. Romans 8 I believe it is 23 that tells us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And if it's not right, you know, just get in your Bible and feel free to correct. But all have sinned. So we all are sinners. The difference is if you are in one in your prayer closet asking for forgiveness, asking God to help me live this life better, to live it in purpose. But if you are out there living a life in willful sin, and I'll give you an example in okay? case you're like, I don't know. Yo no sabe. I don't know anything, okay? If you're out there participating in fornication, that is willful sin. Because there's a lot of steps that you got to take <laughs> to get into fornication. And if those of you who don't know what it is, Google it, all right? Must I say everything? But that's if you're outside of covenant. Covenant means you're outside of marriage. And you're doing the box ring boogie, okay? If you're doing that, that's outside of the will of God. Now, there are things that when you commit them outside willful sin, there will be consequen consequences, excuse me, and repercussions for that. And I encourage you to get in the will. The Bible tells us uh, we all going to have trouble anyway, okay? So why would you want to add to that trouble that's already promised to you? If you're living in the will of God, you're in your prayer closet and you're asking God, okay, I want to live my life submitted to your will. And trust me, that's a big ask, okay? It is. It is. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be easy when you say, yes, I want to submit to the will of God. Because <laughs> if we're honest, I'll just speak from my own personal view. This is my life, ain't it? You know what I'm saying? This is my life. I want to do what I want to do. I don't necessarily want to fall in line all the time. And it requires <laughs> commitment and dedication to stay in the will of God. Because sometimes God will say, oh, can't go to that job. Oh, can't be in that relationship. Oh, stay away from that person. God may tell you that you need to live your life in a different way. And I'm not saying we should just blatantly blame God for every decision that we make. I'm talking about people who have been submitted in their prayer, prayer closets. They are fasting and they're asking about what the will of God is for their life. Because not all the time it may be easy to decipher. There may be a decision. You may be like, I don't know if this is the will of God. And sometimes it won't always be crystal clear. 
That I can attest to. Now, your personal testimony might be different. It might be, you know, go left and that is, that's the answer. But when it's a little bit of, oh, I don't know, I encourage you to pray. And if you really want to answer fast, ask God to really, you know, show me the correct way. But if we're not committed to being submitted to the will of God, there are some things we're going to suffer just because we have chosen to live outside of the will of God. And I encourage you single mothers, okay? If, whew, I'm going to take my time because this might hurt. If you are living in willful and knowing sin, I encourage you to get out of it and get out of it quickly. Because <laughs> the enemy will have things look good, taste good, and it's not. And those are things that are outside of the will of God. And we don't want to, there's a scripture that tells us we don't want to die before it's our time. But we can. There are several people who have woke up dead because they are living their life outside of the will of God. And yes, we live in a sinful world, but there are things, actions that we can take that can shorten our life. And I encourage you, if that's the case, ask for forgiveness. And when you're there, do a turn. And God knows our heart in the sense of not just blatant, because there are some people like, God knows my heart, and they're just doing all kind of things, drinking, smoking, getting high, doing all kind of things. But, well, God knows my heart. That is incorrect. Yes, he knows your heart, but you also have to have a heart that is committed to not do willful sin. A heart that is committed to ask for forgiveness when you are committing sin and then make a turn from it. And if you're caught up in premarital sex, and I encourage you because I was talking, well, I won't say who I was talking to because you might be watching the video. <laughs> but there's a situation that I know about, about uh, a young man and a young lady who are surprised that they're pregnant or expecting a baby how could you be surprised if one you're not protecting yourself all right i mean if you're going to be out there doing things protect yourself getting pregnant sometimes is the least of your worries okay because there are some things you can get an antibiotic shot for and other things you got for life okay but when you're out there and you're in willful sin don't be surprised there are going to be repercussions and if that's the case, be able to be willing to make a sacrifice to say, okay, you're not, let me tell you something, okay? You're not going to die if you don't have premarital sex. Yep, I put it out there. I said it because that is not a requirement for oxygen. Check your lungs. Do your anatomy and physiology on Google. Having sex is not required for oxygen. It's just not. And when you're caught up in making decisions like that, understand this. And when I was talking with this particular individual about it, I was saying that you have people who are making decisions. You're creating life. Understand it's not a Barbie doll or a hamster. You are creating life. And God holds you responsible for that life. There are plenty of people who have prayed and fasted and cannot have children. But people who are out there making babies all willy-nilly. And then you have this child brought up in dysfunction. You're just leaving your child with scars and wounds that they're going to have to see a therapist for. When if you took the opportunity to love yourself, get in your prayer closet and live your life within God's will, we will not be passing on generational curses to our children. And that's something I'm a firm believer in because I see so many children or young adults or even grown folks who have not healed from their trauma and their pain and yet they have the nerve to procreate. I just seen it today. A, a lady who was just yelling at her child over something that he could not comprehend. And why would you? I understand you're frustrated as the parent. But it's your job to teach them. So before I hop off on another tangent about parental responsibilities. And not leaving our children to suffer the same wounds that we have. Because when you're committed to... If you're committed to a person that you're choosing to procreate with, because that's your choice, unless the circumstances are special and you did not have a choice, when you have a choice, that's for life. 
that don't be surprised when they're upset and don't want to be a part of the child's life. You chose them. You chose them. So we have to be <laughs> adult about the situation and make sure that when we're living our lives, we're living it within God's will and we're making these decisions that can affect us for the rest of of our lives understand there are some people who don't care yellow i'm gonna just live my life how i want to if you're gonna be selfish then keep your legs closed but that's it for today ladies um don't forget to join the oac nation and subscribe check out my new website conferencesinglemoms.com i believe it's going to be in the description below and thank you so much for watching